All right, chemists. So um, this is a review video for you. This is on the naming and writing formulas work that we did as a part of this compounds unit. And so I'm just going to work quickly through this chart, this question, and go over each of these compounds. Uh, the key, really, if you just have the formula, is being able to identify when those are molecular compounds, like that first one is, or an acid, like this one is, or even a hydrate here. This is a hydrate, but the first part of this is ionic. And so we'll talk about those as we go through. If a molecule, if a compound is molecular, if it's a molecule, then that means it's not made of ions. And so we're going to ignore both of those. If it's molecular, this means that we're going to use prefixes to name the two elements that are in this compound. And there are two nitrogens. So this would be di-nitrogen. There are four oxygens. So you could either say tetra, or you can drop the A and just say tetroxide. And since all compounds here, we're always going to end in IDE unless it's specifically a polyatomic ion, then that's the case here. On the second line, we see two ions. That means this is definitely gonna be an ionic compound. Our goal is to balance the charges. We see that this unit, this polyatomic ion has a three minus charge. This one has a one plus charge. Because this is three minus, we're gonna need three of these ions to balance that out. So we're going to put parentheses around NH4 and then say that we have three of those and then finish this up with PO3. We don't have to write the charges here. Now the names of those ions, that's all we have to do to name the compound. NH4 plus, hopefully you remember, is ammonium. And then the PO3 looks an awful lot like phosphate which would be PO4, three minus. Notice this has one less oxygen. Whenever you have less oxygen, instead of being an A-T-E ending, it will always be an I-T-E ending. So this would be ammonium phosphite. Here we have iron to sulfate. So notice that we have a metal and a polyatomic ion. So this also looks like it's an ionic compound. Iron two. Iron is Fe, the two tells us the charge, that's always the charge, not necessarily the number of the ions. Sulfate, you want to work on having memorized is SO4 two minus. This is two plus, two minus, those two charges are already equal, so we don't have to do anything to balance the charges here. So ferrous or iron two sulfate would just be Fe SO4. Per manganic acid, because this is an acid, it's going to make ions in water, and it would be important to know what those are, but the compound itself does not consist of ions. It is a covalent compound. So per manganic, we want to cover up the IC and think about what this came from, and it would have come from per manganate. Permangan, manganate. And the permanganate ion would be MnO4 with a one minus charge. For this to be an acid, it's going to have a hydrogen bonded to it. Because permanganate has a one minus charge, we would only put one H with this to make it into an acid, and that would be balanced. Dinitrogen trioxide we should be thinking again, we see prefixes, and more so than that, we see two nonmetals. We see nitrogen and oxygen again. So prefixes and two nonmetals tells us this is gonna be a molecular compound. And so we just simply take the prefixes and say how many of those elements there are. So there are two nitrogens and three oxygens. This compound here, the lead is four plus, the hydroxide is one minus. That might be a little tricky to see with this zoom level, but this means four and one. Four is the least common multiple. And to get a total of four plus and four minus, we have to have four hydroxides. So we're gonna say PbOH in parentheses with a four outside of the parentheses. We name these ions because lead can have multiple charges. 
we want to name it as either lead four, and you can use parentheses, or you could use the old name, and the old name would make this into plumbic, plumbic, because four is the higher charge, and then the OH is called hydroxide. H2CO3, again, we see an acid, so there's no ions in that compound. The CO3 is called carbonate, if you're thinking about the polyatomic ions. Whenever you see ATE as the ion ending in an acid, you're going to change that to IC, so this would be carbonic. And then you always tack acid onto the end of the name. Finally, the COCl2, we're going to have CO, we're going to have Cl. Chloride is one minus, and there are two of those. So our total negative charge is two minus. To balance that out, our cobalt has to be two plus. There's only one cobalt, so this one single cobalt is two plus. This tells us that this would be cobalt two chloride. And then the 6H2O, this is water that's trapped inside of the salt crystal. The 6, the prefix would be hexa. And then hydrate. And you may even recognize this one now after doing the hydrate percent composition worksheet where you had two different cobalt, two chloride compounds. One was a dihydrate and one was a hexahydrate. So I hope this is helpful for review. Um, feel free to look back over any of these, ask questions if you still have them. This will be on this upcoming test.